Hello, and welcome to the Gene Tumor documentary. In the next 10 minutes, you will explore the life of the great poet Gene Tumor. Enduring numerous struggles throughout his life, he became one of the leading figures of the Harlem Renaissance. As Gene Tumor overcomes abandonment and bullying, you will be presented with an amazing insight into his childhood, family, career, and death. Although controversy surrounds Gene Tumor, one cannot deny the everlasting contribution to American literature and his legacy. Nathan Eugene Pinchback Tumor, later known as Gene Tumor, was born on December 26, 1894 in Washington, D.C. to Nathan Tumor and Nina Pinchback. Tumor was racially diverse, having both Caucasian and African American within his bloodline. In 1895, when Jean was only about one year of age, Nathan Tumor abandoned Nina and Jean to go back to his hometown in Mason, Georgia. Nathan Tumor was never to be seen again. Devastated, homeless, and with nowhere else to go, Nina and Jean settled in with grandparents in Washington, D.C. After a slight hesitation, PBS Pinchback agreed to have Nina and Jean live with him. It was not always easy for Jean at school, as he did endure bullying due to his mixed descent. In 1904, at the age of 10, Tumor had come down with nearly deadly stomach ailments, in which he suffered nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting. After graduation in 1914, Tumor attended the University of Wisconsin in 1914 to major in agriculture. Soon after, Tumor found a new interest in physical fitness and continued on to attend the American College of Physical Training in 1916 to obtain a degree in physical fitness. Later on, Jean attended the New York College, where he obtained no degree. Soon after, Jean Tumor inherited a very large oh, amount of money from his grandparents, which, which made him a very rich man. Oh, thank you. So, um, how about marrying me? Um, oh, of course! Yeah, let's go! In 1919, Tumor received a job writing for the New York Call, where the articles he published reflected Tumor's political and economic background. Later, he befriended Waldo Frank, who helped him publish his famous novel, Cain. The first section of Cain puts together six stories, twelve poems that use nature to make portraits of six southern women. Part two includes de yeah, descendants and survivors of the black southern culture and the post-Civil War world. Part three, the longest section, is about an educated, confused black artist struggling to represent the parting soul of the African-American past in art. Margie, 
Soon after, an editor from the New Age taught Timo the beginnings of Gurdjieff's system of self-development yeah, through intellectual, you. emotional, and physical like integration. When Tumor returned to the U.S. in 1926, he finished his novel Caracom and continued to write novels, plays, poems, sketches, and essays. In the spring of 1931, Tumor meets Marjorie Latimer, who was a member of Oregay's New York Borgeff group. Soon after their meeting, Jean weds Marjorie. Again? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Have you heard? Jean Tuma was not always faithful to his wife, however, and saw mistresses in the duration of their marriage. After a year of their marriage, Marjorie gives birth to a baby girl, but at a cost. Sadly, Marjorie died, died in childbirth with Jean at her side. You can be one of the first to own his complete collection of pure inspiration in the form of Jean Tumor's poems, including Georgia Duff's Evening Song and many more. Full moon rising on the waters of my heart, lakes and moon and fires, cloying tires holding her lips apart. Promises of slumber leaving sore to charm the noon. Miracle made Vesper keep. Cloying yeah. sleeps and I'll be sleeping soon. Cloying curled like sleeping waters where the moon waves start. Radiant resplendently she gleams. Cloying dreams. Lips pressed against my heart. Hello, today I'd like to offer you a chance to get to know one of America's great poets, Gene Tumor. Today, you can buy a detailed biography of Gene Tumor's life for two and easy payments of $30. This DVD includes information from Gene Tumor's birth in Washington, D.C., all the way through the rest of his life. For those of you who don't know, Gene Tumor was a man of mixed descent who wrote about slavery in a mention about... Soon after, Tumor traveled to the Southwest soon after his wife's death. Today. There, he met Georgia O'Keefe, another one of his lovers. They never married. DVD, ...including extras about this amazing man's poems, including November Cotton Flower, Evening Song, and many more. Don't miss the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to learn about a memorable historical figure. Call this number within the next 15 minutes to receive the two DVDs previously mentioned. In 1934, Tumor met Marjorie Content, the woman who became his second wife. And in the spring, he moved with his wife, Marjorie, and his daughter, Marjorie, to Doylestown. Tumor was a womanizer throughout their marriage, but Marjorie desperately wanted their marriage to work, so she ignored his unfaithfulness. Stay tuned, and we'll continue on about Jean's life after this short break. Hey, Jean, Jean, do you have time for an interview? I heard you had a bunch of mistresses. What, what happened to your first wife? How did she die? What kind of soap do you use? <laughs> yeah, it's so okay. Hello and welcome to the Harlem Renaissance Music Theater. Here, we play music from famous composers and singers during the Harlem Renaissance, such as King Oliver. 
Louis Armstrong, and Bessie Smith. Come on down to the Harlem Renaissance Music Theater as soon as possible to enjoy the amazing tones of Renaissance music in a theater near you.